by and large, the American people want to pass strong gun safety legislation. 80% of Americans believe it's time to toughen up on gun laws to prevent potential mass shooters from acquiring firearms. A new poll reveals that most Americans support torturing terror suspects. The majority of Americans approve of that airstrike. Most Americans think the U.S. has a serious problem with unauthorized immigration. We've been taught to believe that if a majority of people believe or want something, then it must be reasonable, and that it's justified for government and politicians to make it so. But what if being on the side of the majority has absolutely nothing to do with being right, rational, or moral? In 1971, 88% of Americans thought cannabis should be illegal, in line with the government's war on drugs. A majority continued to believe that until around 2012, and millions are still in jail wasting away for this failed majority opinion backed by government enforcement. In 1958, 96% of Americans opposed interracial marriage, and that had been the law for years in many states around the country. In 1945, 85% of Americans thought it was a good idea to obliterate two cities and hundreds of thousands of innocent lives with the nuclear bombings of Japan. Despite the fact that Japan was already going to surrender and even revered General Eisenhower discouraged it. Though that number has dropped in more recent times, a majority still thinks it was the right thing to do. A majority of Americans supported LBJ's invasion of Vietnam, which ultimately left 58,000 Americans dead, as many as 2 million Vietnamese civilians dead, and caused generations of birth defects from the chemicals the American military sprayed. Just two weeks after the Nazi regime violently targeted Jews, destroying their private property, 94% of Americans wisely disapproved of their behavior. Yet 72% also opposed offering refuge to the persecuted, many of whom were later killed. FDR and the U.S. government denied them entry. In March of 1942, shortly after FDR used executive power to order the relocation or internment of Japanese immigrants, 93% of Americans believed it was right, and a mere 1% opposed it. 59% supported doing the same to American citizens of Japanese ancestry, while only 25% opposed this clear violation of civil liberties and individual rights, as the majority proved the Constitution's words on paper powerless. 72% of Americans supported the disastrous war in Iraq at its outset, and 80% supported the Afghanistan war, another failure that's gone on for almost two decades. From a 2001 Gallup poll, over half of Americans, 56%, say the war in Afghanistan will be over within several months. More than 6 in 10 Americans, 66%, say they think the U.S. war efforts would be as successful in Iraq as they have been in Afghanistan. Around the same time, a majority of Americans believed liars and warmongers in power were doing a great job in the war on terror, 87% approval for Bush and 82% approval for Secretary of Defense. Donald Rumsfeld. In fact, the public's pro-government majority opinions are often manipulated by government and media propaganda. The war on drugs, the claims about aluminum tubes to justify the invasion of Iraq, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, the lies about babies in incubators. Clearly, humans are prone to error, and when those errors are enforced with the violence of government by other humans prone to error and also abusing power, as history shows, they are exponentially more harmful. It would be one thing if a majority of people or even corporations wanted to bomb Vietnam or anywhere else. On their own, they'd have no right, but Colin the state, the supreme authority that derives its power through and is defined by a monopoly on violence, and the fighter jets drop bombs. Though some Americans might claim America is a republic, not a democracy, and this prevents the tyranny of majority rule, the same mechanism occurs in legislatures, where the so-called majority of the population supposedly has the right to pick who makes the rules. The decisions in these legislatures are left to a majority vote, and through these votes, those in power have authorized or funded unspeakable crimes against humanity. The fact that the Senate can override the House doesn't change the fact that their votes are still based in majority rule, and that's that's also how the rule makers are chosen. It's often not even a majority, but a plurality. Through this mechanism and elections at large, the majority rulers swing back and forth, left to right. And every time one side loses power, they complain about being forced to submit to their enemies, all too eager to impose their views once the levers of power return to their favor. Yet for all this deference to majority rule, in these claims of representation is a distinct lack of majority. Though Clinton's supporters and Trump resistors often claim she won the popular vote in 2016, and though it was a simple majority of those who voted, it was not a majority of people who were forced to fund the system and abide by its often absurd rules. Nearly 47% of eligible voters didn't vote, either because they couldn't or they see how useless it is. Only 9% of Americans chose Trump and Clinton as the nominees. On top of that, the system established in 1789 lacked any kind of majority approval from the people it claimed to rule over, except the majority of the tiny group of elites who voted to approve it. The average person living in America in that time got no say. They weren't asked if they wanted to adopt the Constitution, yet the document is repeatedly cited as some sort of consensual social contract by which we all must abide. Today, a tiny minority of a few 
200 people continue to make decisions for over 300 million, a majority of whom didn't pick them. The same occurs on a smaller scale in the states. Some will argue that the system isn't perfect, that our best and only option is to vote harder with majority rule to perfect it. And sure, sometimes people, including lawmakers imposing unjust policies, come to their senses over time, changing their opinions on horrendous government dictates. Sometimes they don't. But not before lives are destroyed, cities are burned to the ground, and basic human rights are violated the world over. If people would question what they've been taught to believe, we might be able to have decentralized systems based on consent, as in actual consent. Not, you were born here, so you must obey. All the way down to the individual. Instead, the system of rule not only kills innocent people, but also impoverishes them, exploits them, and punishes them for victimless behavior, all while telling them they're free because they might sometimes be part of a majority that puts politicians in power to rule over others. We're taught repeatedly that democracy and republicanism are the pinnacles of human achievement, the final stops on humanity's evolution toward civilization. But there's nothing civilized about subjecting individuals to the whims of the masses and the tyrants they put in power.